LeVar, good to talk to you again. How are you? What's up, Dan? How are you doing, buddy? I'm doing okay. The best... Hey, you know, that's, that's a horrible poll. You know, that's, that's like the second best player in the nation. You know, it's, it's all about the buckets. I, I thought you would have known mm, that by now, Dan. Mm. Who Do is... a poll on, on who is the lead guy, the lead candidate for the buckets, and would you take him versus the field? I think that's a better poll question. Who is the best football player in the country right now? It is Leonard Fournette. <laughs> <laughs> uh, who does he remind you of? Oh man, he he kind of looks like a Bo Jackson. He's, I mean, he his running style, his build. You know, I I have had the opportunity to to work with him and and get to know him at the Under Armour All American game, and his style, his his ability to to cut, uh, his strength, his his speed. Um, he, I mean, he's got, he's like everybody in one, you know, you just put them together and, and that's, you know, you can think about, but the first, the first name that jumps into my mind is he looks like Bo Jackson a little bit. Did you tackle Bo? What's that? Did you tackle Bo Jackson? Uh, you know, he was never fortunate enough to, to still be in the game when I got to the point of when I was playing in the, in the pros. So no, I never got a chance to tackle him. And same with Herschel Walker. Never got a chance. I, you know, I'm not that old, DP. Come on, man. I'm 37. Well, two, 2000 I'm draft. Old. I'm not that old. Now, were you in the draft with Brady, right? He, he was in the draft with me. But now, <laughs> but now, but now the tables have turned. My head the mighty fallen. <laughs> Do you remember face? Did you face him in college? I wore him out. <laughs> we never beat Michigan, but me personally, I, I mean, I, I think I had maybe three or four sacks on really big hits on Brady. Like, you know, I was embarrassing Brady, but he ended up beating us. I mean, they, the Michigan ended up beating us. Um, not, I don't think cause they were a better team. I just think that, you know, for one reason or another, they were able to, to win while I was there. But yeah, I mean, I've been facing Brady since college. Did you have any I idea? Face Brady. Did you have any idea in college that he would even play in the NFL? You know, I don't think you even look at things that way back then. Uh, I, I think you focus in on who are the top players. Like when I was in college, I focused in on my teammates on, on our team. You know, Courtney Brown was a, a stud. You know, Brandon Short was a stud. Uh, we had some guys on on the on the offensive side. Larry Johnson was a freshman. Mm -hmm. um, we we had Anthony Adams and Jim Kennedy, and we had a ton of players on our team. And then when you looked around, I mean, the, the best football player in the land. You know, of course, outside of myself, mm. uh, was Peter Wark. Uh, that was, a, you know, we paid attention to Peter Wark. I paid attention to Mike Vick. Uh, I paid attention to a lot of guys like that uh, in and around the country. Um, but, you know, Tom Brady, you, you never really looked at guys and was like, huh, I wonder if he'll play in the pros or not. I mean, I played against Drew Brees. If you would have said, who is the guy that, that you say you're playing against at that position that you'd say – I'm going to see him later on in the league. It would have been Drew Brees. Oh, yeah? You knew it right away? Oh, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. You go look at that guy's film. <laughs> well, I remember watching because, you know, Joe Tiller, I thought was ahead of his yeah. time in, in the offense that he ran there at Purdue, but uh, I, everybody said the same thing uh, about Brees. He's not big enough. Well, and, and I understand that to be a good point, but – Talent is talent, and football IQ is football IQ, and his football IQ was was off the chart, and his ability to deliver the ball, his his ability to understand the, the flow of the game, uh, it was as good as I I had seen at that position from from anybody that we had played against, That's or at, that I had watched out there. Uh, there's uh, some kind of dialogue going on here about Ed Hockley and Cam Newton. Cam Newton said in the game yesterday that he thought that he he was roughed, you know, roughing the passer call should have been made by Ed Hockley. And he claims that Hockley said that you're too young to get that call. Hockley has been adamant, according to the NFL, he said that, that, that he never said that. Uh, we, we weren't there. We're taking his word, Cam Newton's word. But did you ever have dialogue with an official where they would have said something to you that would have seemed kind of snarky or cynical or off the cuff? Oh, of course. Of course. I mean, but that's, that's, that's interaction on the field. You know, some of us look at that football field as the Serengeti, and those who don't know who, what the Serengeti is, it's a wild <laughs> plain in Africa where you, you, you kill or you be killed, you know, and that's, 
I mean, you can't take sensitivity onto the Serengeti, DP. You can't do it. If you're sensitive in the Serengeti, you get your head bit off. So did you have, you know, snark? Did I have snarky remarks? Yeah. Did they have snarky remarks? Sure. It's a part of it. But you keep moving. And and I, I think, you know, regardless of if Hockey Lee said it or not, who cares? Who cares? Well, you're you being treated hair. differently, though, LeVar, that, that if you're Everybody a young quarterback. Differently. Everybody gets treated differently. See, the problem we have is we try to make we try to make things topics like okay, Cam Newton is big, he runs versus a guy that doesn't run. That's a stand up statuesque quarterback. If he gets touched, uh, it's a you know it's a penalty. If if a guy who runs gets touched, it's not. It's understood that there's never going to be an even line across the board as to how things are called or how they're judged. Get over it. Let me tell you something. If you're a three-legged lion out there and, and you're telling me that, that I, I need to have somebody give me preferential treatment because I'm, I'm limping with three legs versus the other lion over here that has four lines, let me tell you something. If that lion gets that, 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 that prey out there with four legs, he's not looking at the lion with three legs saying, oh, let me give some to you because you only, you're, you're limping, you're, you're wounded. I'm sorry. Like, I'm not going to take over your pride because you're a little bit wounded. Like, there are no fair rules. Like, people got to get over being so sensitive about, about how, how those things are looked at and how they're called. You get out there, you do your job. If you want to talk about what's going on on the field, that's your business. But at the end of the day, those guys are out there trying to do the best job that they can do as well. And whatever that dialogue is going to be, it's going to be. It's not going to change what they're going to call, especially with Hockey League. You know, he, he got all those muscles and stuff like that. He <laughs> wants to grab his flag. Believe you me, if it was going to give Hockey League the chance to flex his muscle and throw a flag and say personal foul on the defense, Hockey League would have did it. So, I, I, you know, regardless of if it's because it's a runner or not, I just think people get too sensitive and too caught up on all these topics of conversation. The game has gotten soft. You see how many flags they're throwing? Oh, way too many. It's a million and one flags being thrown. So to complain about one flag not being thrown because you got hit maybe a little later, I saw that happen a couple times. There wasn't a flag thrown on Ben Roethlisberger when when he got hurt. Did there, you there think was that that was was that a, somebody got hit? Was that a good hit though? A, a, a legit hit by Barron on Roethlisberger? This, well, the thing about it was he came through the line, he was going to the ground, and he still tried to make the tackle. So these things are all left to interpretation. You know, I, I thought that there were plays that were made yesterday. Some were called incomplete. I thought that that, uh, that touchdown where the guy caught the ball, the tight end caught the ball, put the ball over the plane, that's a touchdown. You know, he came down, he, he, the ball came out, then it should have been a fumble or it should have been a touchdown, and it couldn't have been a fumble because it was already a touchdown. So, uh, you know, there's just so many different rules, and you know, I know that the league is doing the best that they can to try to govern the game and, and make the game a little bit more safer. And so is that a, a legal hit? You know, I, I don't know what's legal anymore, but that's the whole point is nobody needs to get sensitive or, or super moist and emotional about things that may have been said. Now, if it was like a slur or if he was berating Cam Newton, like, like, dang, come on, man. Like, you're, you're, you're young. Like, yeah. you're a young guy. Yeah. Come on. Like, really? That's a part of your conversation. Like, get over that. And I'm a Cam Newton fan. I love Cam. But the stuff like that, it's a non-factor to me. The 3-0 and team that you're all in on and the 3-0 and team that you're not. Oh, I'm not in on any 0 and three team. Oh, or you said three and three and oh. Three and oh. Okay, who's who's three and oh right now? I got uh, Patriots, Bengals, Broncos, Patriots, all in. They're a better team than what they were last year. Can you imagine that? You lose Revis, and I don't even have to give any more names. They lost my baby, my cousin, and Kyle Arrington. They lost their whole secondary. They are a better team this year, hands down than what they were last year. This might be the best they've been since we've been watching them. I mean, they're, they're amazing. I'm all in on them. All right, now give me another. Bengals, three. Broncos, Falcons, Panthers, Cardinals, all 3-0. I'm not, I'm not going to take the Broncos, even though I think their defense is playing much better right now. The two teams that I say 3-0 that I wouldn't take 
until I saw them win a Super Bowl would be the Broncos and the Bengals. The Bengals play so well. You know, Marvin Jones, he's going, he's going to be the difference in those guys running through the regular season if he stays healthy. People forgot about him because he got injured last year and didn't play. But when you look at the way this offense is operating, a lot of the reason why A.J. Green's numbers are going back up and he's resurging, and so to speak, is because he's got that guy out there with him right now who can make the same type of big plays as A.J. So it's such a balance, and Dalton is, is maturing. He's turning into, you know, to me, a super, super uh, positive contributor outside of what he has been uh, for that team in the past. But that if they can't do it in the playoffs, I can't ride with you. And those have been two teams that have given it up. Now, granted, Denver went to the Super Bowl, but they couldn't finish it. They didn't finish it. And and it seems like the Denver defense disappears in the playoffs for some reason. Like when you really need the Denver defense, they they're not there. So I would I would be off on on Denver and and Cincinnati until until I see them win a Super Bowl. You know, fired up this morning. I like this man. Come on, let's do it, man. I mean, I don't get to get on with you too often. Do you it's almost like do you ever want a job interview for me? You know, I love Dan Patrick. Uh, we had Sean O'Hara who said he missed the violence. I mean, how do you replace the violence of playing in the NFL? You know, I think that's a great question. I still think that you can play the game at a very physical level. You know, for me, I actually started a company. It's called Extreme Precision with an X and, and with an O and, and precision. You can be an extreme pro at what you do if you know the fundamentals. I think the problem that we have right now is that guys, go an entire lifetime playing the game, and they're never taught the proper fundamentals of the game. You know, I was as physical a linebacker as there was, and I never really hit people dirty. If you see my film, I never hit guys with the crown in my head, and I made very big hits, too. The, the thing about it is, is that the physicality of the game is within the details of your fundamentals. So if you're teaching the fundamentals correctly at a younger age, and these guys are actually learning how to make contact, how to play physical and, and play technically sound, then by the time they get to high school, by the time they get to college, and, and then if they're lucky enough to make it into the league, you see an entire group of guys that can play the game at a physical level and, and with a violent, uh, a violent uh, aspect to it, and, and it not be as dangerous as, as it would be if they, they were playing violently with, with no technique and no fundamentals uh, present with the way that they play. I mean, I saw a running back run through the middle of the ball, run through the line, the kid from Denver, and he sticks his head down and the defender sticks his head down as well. You know, these guys are still at the pro level. They're using their heads and they're, they're ducking their heads to make hits. And that's where all these concussions are coming from. Yeah. That's where all these, these neck injuries are coming from. Those are things that can actually be prevented through the proper preparation of how you play the game. All right. Well, don't be a stranger next time, all right? We'll, hey, man. You we'll know, have you, you on. Me. All right. You, then, you know what? I'll call you again, and uh, we'll see. You I mean, called me, and I came on. You saw that? I know. You saw that? Yeah, you I know. You guys requested me to come on with you. Yes. And I got up so that I could speak Dan Patrick <laughs> on the Dan Patrick <laughs> radio show and spit my knowledge. Why I had the platform with the great Dan Patch. We'll do it again. Thank you very much. All right, brother. I appreciate it. Thank you. All right, you take care. That's LeVar Arrington, NFL Network.